Hello, I'm Luke Nalla and welcome to Best Replays of the Week. In this episode we have an indestructible E100, heroic scouting from a bottom tier med tank and our own personal waifu. Let's get to it. The Scout of the Week is Tolik 1988 from the EU region. Tolik drives a Cromwell B and the match is a tier 8 assault on Sand River. The early part of the game consists of doing donuts in the sand and dodging artillery. The first effective shot gets fired at a bulldog. Allies get the kill, but it's a start. Elsewhere, a problem child is having a meltdown. The Borsig murders an ally and then another one. The team killer is finally put down, but the difficulty of the match has definitely gone up. Driving away a scorpion is nice, and bagging a Tiger 2 is even better. A Skoda T25 peeks out, firing a couple of shells into Tolik's Cromwell. Luckily, an ally is awake and able to stop the assault. Yikes! Tolik gets into cover and chucks a couple of shells at the Jagdpanta. Here's an even bigger TD, and it's showing its side. The scout fires a few shells, withdraws for a moment, and returns to finish off the TD and his companion. The defenders are two points ahead, which is not great news in an assault. Finishing off this scorpion gear helps, but there's still plenty of work to do. A Jagdiga shows its silhouette, and Tolik makes use of the opportunity. When the beast turns to attack, it's time to be somewhere else. What is that other thing scouts do? Oh yes, they kill artillery. The Lorraine doesn't agree and ends up being taken out by a Centurion instead. Two versus two now, with less than 90 seconds left in the match. The clock ticks down, and the defenders just need a single survivor to win. Tolik starts pumping APCR shells into the Jagdiga, while the last ally takes out the second opponent. There is nowhere to run, and the big TD gives up the ghost with 18 seconds left on the clock. That was cutting it a bit close, but I don't think we can ask anything more from a bottom tier med tank. The rare medal is a nice touch as well. Moving on, the next one is a defender game from the Asian region, where Waifu drives an E25 on Erlenberg. With a name like that, we can only assume World of Tanks has a special place in this player's heart. We love you too, Waifu. The E25 heads south, looking for an opportunity to strike. Here's a fat Churchill 7 ripe for the picking. Unfortunately, the tracks hold together and it manages to crawl into cover. There's quite a bit of driving around before finding the next victim, but knocking out an M44 is worth the effort. There's a comatose KV-3 here as well. A sixth sense alert spooks Waifu for a moment, badly enough to leave the free kill unclaimed. An AC-4 experimental takes a beating and retreats. Waifu isn't done with it, however. A brief chase and three more shots are enough to turn the enemy into scrap. All of a sudden, things get serious. The game is two against six and the base is getting captured. The defender heads to the high ground and attempts a long-range reset. The AOC proves to be a difficult target as the last ally is removed from the game. The Kappa leaves the circle for some reason and Waifu takes the opportunity to kill an SPG which blunders into the lion's den. The Kappa returns, this time with a friend. The EOC stops for a moment, making itself an easy target. Waifu heads closer, picking up a Hellcat kill on the way. Mm, no, best not to tangle with this one yet. Here we go, the Churchill is a tough hombre, but the capture has been reset. The American Heavy is soft and squishy from this angle at least. The Churchill has left the circle, but it's actually more vulnerable now, for a moment at least. Waifu takes the opportunity to dispose of the remaining SPG before heading back to deal with the stubborn British Heavy. See what I mean? It just won't give up. Waifu charges in at full speed and starts trading blows with the Churchill. Okay, this is taking too long. The E25 charges down the flank, eats one more shell and ends the match with a shot from a better angle. A solid defender carry from Waifu, nine kills ace tanker and a list of medals as long as you're up. What more could we ask for? Now let's head back to the European servers for a crucial contribution from Raven HR. The tier 9 battle is fought over Fisherman's Bay and Raven's chariot is the black German bulldog. 
Raven charges down the middle, getting in a few opening shots. One more shell goes through the side of an M103 before the dog has to retreat. The big cat receives the next shell, but a light tank comes to its aid. Raven returns the shot and backs away. Opponents are advancing through the harbor. Raven fires several shots at them before returning to the center line and claiming the first kill. Ouch, straight into the jaws of an IS-3, and a shot from an M103 adds to the damage. Maybe it's time to gain some distance and to pick up a second kill, of course. The M103 has invaded the circle. Raven gives it a few whacks and spares some for a conqueror as well. It takes a while to find the next victim. An FCM 50 ton receives a sniper shot at long range, but the finishing shot bounces off. A T49 comes barreling down the road, but a smack on the bottom makes it hesitate. There's time for a quick duel with an IS-6 before the scout finds its courage and resumes the attack. Here it comes. One, two, and three. Thanks for playing. The IS is coming out as well. The first heat shell fails, but the second one reduces the enemies down to three. Opponents gang up on the remaining ally, who dies despite Raven's best efforts. Revenge is swift, but Raven is now alone, one against two. The Black Dog is below 100 HP, so there's no room for error. The FCM decides to try its luck, and Raven strikes it down. One more to go. The Conqueror gets spotted, but it goes both ways. There's an exchange of shots, and the Lucky Dog survives with a broken trap. That was the last heat round, and the next shot just bounces off. Raven has time for one last attempt with the last AP round. Success! Victory with only four HE shells left. Well played, Raven HR. It looked pretty grim when your tank ate those heavy shells early on, but you rallied magnificently. Extra style points for taking care of all the enemy scouts. Now we're we'll head over to the American servers for something we haven't seen for a while on the show, a tier 4 Top Gun Rampage. The player is Junior Scope, and the tool of destruction is a Panzerkundwagen 3 Ausforderung J. Junior Scope floors the accelerator, taking the shortest route to the eastern plateau. The first targets are a pair of TDs. They go down without managing to return a single shot. A Panzer 1 Sehr pounces from behind, wounding the commander and causing significant damage. As Junior Scope tries to deal with the deadly little scout, other enemies take the opportunity to ascend to the high ground. The Top Gun engages a T-46 and with a little help from a teammate, takes it out. The little Ein Sir is easy to finish off, but an LTP puts up a good fight. Now that Junior Scope can concentrate, picking off an M2 is an easy task. Okay, that's Top Gun, but we're just getting warmed up. That said, charging straight at a Hetzer would be a bad idea. Junior Scope climbs down from the plateau instead and starts driving around the mountain. Hey look, a free arty kill. There's a tracked Matilda here. It's immune to regular ammo, but the Top Gun packed along some APCR just in case. Like a hot knife through butter, this'll do the trick. Somebody is taking pot shots, but they will have to wait. Hetzer, your time has come. There are actually two enemies here. The well-angled LTP bounces a lot of rounds before being driven away, and the T-50 withdraws as well. Actually, there are three here, but not for long. The T-50 ignores the Top Gun and pays the price for such ignorance. A Valentine's armor is tough, but it's not quite tough enough. The Top Gun gets their 12th kill and heads back to base to deal with the Kappa. It looks like the Panzer would be fast enough, but the Top Gun's work is done. A teammate deals with the Kappa and the game is over. There we go, 12 kills in five and a half minutes. The challenge isn't massively high when playing Godzilla as tier four, but it's been a while since we've had one of these. Hopefully it was entertaining. For the episode finale, we'll see a wall of steel being put to the test on the EU servers. The bulletproof tank commander is Musty Coco Rech, who drives an E100 in a tier 10 battle on highway. This German Land Cruiser isn't as sturdy as the legendary mouse, but it is faster, and the 15cm cannon packs a serious punch. Musty rolls into town, firing a heat shell in the general direction of an enemy scout. Shots are exchanged with a rival cruiser, with predictable results. There's an arc of enemies in front and to the side of the E100. Cannon shells ring off the armor, but nothing penetrates. Does the T-54 prototype think the steel wall is unarmed? That should teach him. 
The enemies keep breaking the tracks, but Musty isn't in a hurry to go anywhere. An M103 charges into point-blank range, but even the Tier 9 Heavy dies without causing anything but track damage. A T-10 has a go as well, and a spectacular ammo rack hit blows it up before it can even pull the trigger. Enemy assault intensifies, but Musty is all alone, now holding off seven enemies at once. A hit finally penetrates, and when the Centurion gets behind the E-100, Musty is in real trouble. The steel wall parries the Centurion's shots, but killing it proves to be difficult. Things go from bad to worse when the T-54 prototype joins the fight. Massey manages to block the shots from both enemies until an ally blows up the Centurion. Did the prototype learn to fear the E-100's gun earlier? Apparently not. The broken engine is unfortunate, but it's not like the tank was fast anyway. Where does the big TD think it's going? Boom! The Type 4 has a big gun, but it's not big enough. A 15cm heat shell, on the other hand, works just as fine. Uh, okay, that hurts. And this looks really bad. Musty swings the turret around, aiding with the hole when the engine comes back online, and beats the TD to the punch. Whew. Skillful angling bounces another shot from the Type, and it won't get to fire again. The enemies are down to two, as are our heat shells. Musty rolls out looking for trouble. The rival E-100 is nearby, but it's the Object 140 who eats the next shell. The med tank causes some track damage before getting killed by an ally. The E-100 is the last foe standing. The rival backs into view. The massive guns bark almost in unison, and both shots penetrate. The steel wall lives with a broken engine and 168 hit points. Beautiful. It's easy to dismiss the E100 as an ungainly lump, but bouncing almost 11,000 points of damage takes a lot of skill and nerves of steel. Add in the damage dealt, and you'll see that our steel wall carried the day. That's all for this week. We look forward to seeing more of your games. And remember, if you feel there aren't enough games from your region, there's only one way to help us with that. I'm Luke Nella, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. The boss sick is there. Not there. Answer eins, sir. Sir. Oh, sir.